What is going on guys? We are back with another video here in the shop. We got Turdzilla behind us. If you guys saw the last video, uh, we made 360 wheel horsepower out of this 4.6 three valve. Really, really shocked me. And honestly, I didn't even think the car was ready to be tuned. Surprisingly, it was, but we got this big goofy intake thing going on. The reason why we did that is we had some issues with the map working. I had, I cut some wires rewired a math plug back in and i said hey let's go with what this car came with for the math sensor and math values and the tune and then we'll swap over to an 05 plus because i didn't know what was fighting us and i didn't even know if this would work but it worked so i made 360 wheel 93 octane through this little goofy intake that's sticking out the hood now I do have a set of Steeda underdrive pulleys for 4.6 liter three valve. Supposedly people make 10 more wheel horsepower with those pulleys. And it's really simple. It's a larger water pump pulley and it's a smaller diameter, uh, I think SFI rated damper balancer pulley. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is swap these on. Now, what I would, the best scientific way to test this would be to go ahead and run it right now, uh, see what it lays down, then put the pulleys on it. I really don't wanna get the car hot. We're gonna try to use our dyna runs from the other day. We have comparable weather, but just keep in mind, if we see less power, it doesn't mean these pulleys make less power, it could just be the weather. If it makes 20 more wheel horsepower, again, could be the weather. So, um, keep that in mind. We're hoping to see maybe 10 horsepower gain. Could be no gain. We really don't know. Next test will be a little bit more scientific. Uh, we're going to go ahead and swap out this, uh, you know, intake that doesn't fit. We're going to try to put the 05 plus slot style map on and see if the larger intake, uh, will make more power too. And for that, I think that's about it. I do want to test with some E85 later and maybe a DW300 pump, uh, cause we're probably getting close to the limit of this pump, but we're gonna see what we can do. And the car actually runs idles uh, really well. I haven't driven it, obviously, because this thing's sticking out the hood. Uh, I definitely wanna get that fixed so that we, we can actually, you know, put the hood down and maybe start to drive it once we figure out the front suspension. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and pop all this stuff off and start getting the balancer pulled out. Looks like we got plenty of room to work with, so this shouldn't be a too bad of an install.
are locked and loaded on the dyno. Coolant temp should be uh, ready to rock here in a sec. if it makes any more power. not make any more power. 353, So basically, I don't think it's making any more or less. I think it's making the same. So I don't think the pulleys did anything. So we can find our best. Uh, there was like a 360 somewhere in here at some point. Yeah, so run eight, run 11. I don't think that is more or less power. I think it's just different temperature conditions. I think that's all that is. So pulleys, no more power. Okay, so it appears didn't really get anywhere with the pulleys. I don't think we lost any power. You can see the Steeda pulley right there and there. So we didn't lose power, but we didn't gain any power. Um, you know, obviously we just made 355, we made 360 the other day. Temperature conditions a little bit different. Um, but what we're gonna go ahead and do is get this swapped off of here and see if the JLT Series 3 with the 05 style math will make any more power. I don't know if it will, we'll test it. We definitely need to swap it anyways because this doesn't fit under the hood, obviously. All right, so here's our game plan. We're gonna get rid of the big old intake that doesn't fit. And we're gonna try to put this JLT Series 3 on. And we got this extension harness, adapter harness from VMP. Plugs right in, goes right to the 05 MAF. Let's see if we can get this working. Okay, so the JLT is on. Uh, we got the MAF plugged in. So we're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna have to make some tune changes for it, but uh, it should read the MAF. So let's give it a try. Okay, so I did find something out. Uh, we had the wrong map sensor uh, in the tube, so that might have caused the issues originally the other day. Um, just something I didn't check. But after swapping the map sensor in, uh, we have the map reading, and uh, we're going to go ahead and add some more fuel. Basically dial in this map, because this map is pretty different from what is uh, the two valve map. So uh, we're gonna get it close, and then uh, hopefully be able to make some dyno rips here shortly. Okay, we got the map close enough to probably make a pull. Just kidding, that's really rich. We're gonna have to pull some fuel out.
I got the map a lot closer. Let's see uh, how she does. That looks pretty good. And we're just running out of fuel. I'm still working on dialing in this math, but no matter how much, uh, you know, math I throw at it on the top end, it doesn't seem to be really getting into that 12, uh, 12, 3, 12, 7 target. So more than likely, um, we're going to have to do a fuel pump on the car. Um, I do have a lot more changes for it. Um, in terms of we're going to be we're going to be doing a mega squirt three on this so the math sensor won't even matter anymore but i wanted to get it tuned up uh with the stock ecu first so it's taking quite a bit of time to get this math really dialed it's kind of funny because once we go mega squirt and the math won't matter but um i did make another dyno pull i think off camera and we actually got 362 um, and I know we made 360 last time, but this is the same day. So I went ahead and pulled up our first run from today and paired it with the last one. And we got 362. So as that fuel starts to get more and more dialed, um, we actually saw some, the uh, fuel come in check up top, which was pretty nice. Um, so as we see that start to get more dialed, we're actually starting to see some gains. So... Um, now if we lay this over, uh, one of our better ones from last time, you know, we still actually see a little bit of gain there. Um, so is the intake gaining horsepower? It's possible. We're not really sure yet. Um, you can see some wavering down here and, uh, that's part of the uh, fuel that I'm dialing in. So... We're gonna see where we get, but this was a different day, so things are a little bit different. Um, what I'm gonna do is hopefully get this fuel dialed super in, uh, so that way it's super happy, and let it cool down and see if we can make a little bit more. I don't know, but either way, we had to put this intake on so we can get the uh, hood to fit and uh, get it closer to being able to drive this car again. Um, I think HP tuner should be close to done. So, we'll report back. So it appears that uh, we're making a little bit more power. Uh, same day, same result. So about um, 10, 10 to 7 to 10 or something like that. We'll look at it here in a little bit. Um, so I'm looking at the short-term fuel trims and one side, one bank is maxed out 1.25 and one is max 0.75. So I've been trying to dial in the math curve um, being that I don't have a known good math curve and it, it's just fighting me. So the car will be lean or rich on tip-in. And it actually did this the other day, if you remember on the dyno, it kind of went crazy when I tried to make changes to the, the math curve. My theory is that the O2 sensors are flip-flops, so they're on the wrong side. Um, and it's trying to control one bank and control the other one in the opposite direction. Um, so what that means is while it's in closed loop, trying to find Stoich, which is idle, slow rev, cruise, it's not able to do it. Wide open throttle, doesn't matter. We go right into open loop and uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's doing whatever I command it to. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do right now, uh, we do have an MS-3 on the way, so I really don't wanna get under there and burn my arms off because that trans and exhaust and everything's gonna be super hot. Um, so more than likely, I'm just gonna leave it like that and um, we're just gonna have the watt dialed in. MS-3 will be here and what we're actually gonna do, rather than do this twice, we'll just move my wideband to the front O2 sensors and then the uh, narrow bands won't matter because those are just narrow bands. Uh, they, they're not super helpful, um, but they are able to detect Stoich. So once we go closed loop, uh, fully closed loop with MS-3, um, everything's gonna get so much better. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how awesome the MS-3 is. So all I'm gonna do now is let's let the car cool down. And that's pretty much that, just let it cool down. And uh, we'll see if it picks up any more power, maybe 365, but that's the way it's shaping up. So 353, 362. So we are seeing a gain up top. Intake, this is the same day, intake to intake. 352, so 10 horsepower up top. Now, if we had the same weather as the other day, we might have even seen 370. Not that it matters, but um, this is why testing things same day. Uh, it's also why I said uh, the underdrive pulleys does not appear to have added any power or taken away any power um, because there's no way the pulleys are reducing your power by that. Um, so ultimately, you know, that's the way it's shaping up. Um, uh, but if we do take that run nine and compare it to, uh, the two most recent ones, you can actually see right there, we are actually seeing a little bit more power. Now that red one is making more power down low, interestingly enough. Is it conclusive enough to say that much is going on i don't really know from the other day to this day we're we're talking completely different things so i'm only going to talk about our baseline today and our finalized because that is a same day increase and this is what matters okie dokie let's make a rip So letting it cool off, it makes a little bit more power, 364, 340, it made 364 back to back, and on the third round it made 363. So we can take a look at our first run today, second run. So there's your difference in intake. Intake, larger intake, make a little bit more power. It also uh, will let us close the hood, so that's cool. I think we're gonna call it there. I don't think we're gonna be driving the car too much. Like I said, I think those O2 sensors are still backwards. It's not mattering for, it's not gonna matter for a wide open throttle. Um, either that or one might be bad or something like that. Um, but I, obviously you can see the car is running really good. So once we get the Mega Squirt in there, get the wideband wired in, it would be good. Um, I think I'm trying to figure out I might want to do a Celine kit before I wrap the car. So full Celine, Celine rear bumper, side skirts, side scoops, um, front bumper, replace the sail panel. Um, and this thing will be looking freaking sweet uh, with, uh, with a new wrap. But 
364 wheel, not bad. Maybe four more wheel horsepower than last time, but it's, uh, it's an improvement. Uh, but our same day results uh, did show uh, to have a little bit more power. If you guys like the video, make sure you hit the like button down below. Uh, the dyno has been a really fun tool to make some cool content with and really, really get after um, some of these really smaller setups. You would never be doing this paying for all the dyno time at a, a full on shop. You're just not gonna do it with a 463 valve or two valve uh, NA. It just doesn't make sense. Um, being that we have a dyno here, I can spend some time, uh, especially when the schedule's a little freed up or after hours like you guys saw me do the other night. But hit that like button, help support this channel because everything we do costs money and um, the YouTube doesn't really pay the bills, but it helps out a little bit here and there. What pays the bills is me ranching on cars here all day long and selling parts to you guys. So, um, but I'd love to be making more content uh, more often. So yeah, hit the like button, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.